In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya, the version one. Let's jump straight to the end with my thoughts on this pen. I can't say that I've ever written with the nib that would come standard on this. This is their flex nib. And I can say that I enjoy using their flex nib. I find it soft to write with. Now, I don't go after it in a flexy feeling, but I find it softer than a lot of other nibs. It does give some pretty decent line variation while writing. Now, you can flex it, it does. It does take a little bit more pressure and some people are gonna try to compare it to Vintage Flex. But this pen isn't trying to be Vintage Flex. It's what it is. It's a modern Flex pen and with that, and especially at its price point, this is a very good pen to go try out with it. I think being able to experiment with different nibs at a very affordable point is something that this company, Fountain Pen Revolution, does very well. A lot of their pens are very inexpensive. Now, I do use this pen pretty regularly, not as much as I do the Ahab, but that's more a feel of the pen in my hand. I prefer the Ahab a little bit more, but I still really like using this pen. Now that we know how I feel about the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya, let's see how I got to that opinion, starting with the unboxing. The Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya version one did not come in a box. It came in some very nice bubble wrap. With the pen out of the box, we need to get to the nib. And as long as it doesn't take 20 turns to uncap it, I'm generally okay. So how many turns does it take to uncap this pen? The Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya takes one, two, and a half turns to uncap. The turns to uncap seem a bit excessive to me, but I haven't had an issue with this pen drying out when it's not in use. So maybe the excessive turns to uncap are helping in that way, which then it's overcoming a problem before it's a problem. So it could be very utilitarian to have it like that. This gets us to the nib. This pen has their steel flex nib on it. This being about a five, five and a half as a nib, it's not as flexy as say a number six nib, but it still does really well. And I think for what we're looking at with this nib, I think the minimal on the scroll work is really complementing to its look. Now, let's ink this pen up. The Fountain Pen Revolution Himalayas version 1 is a syringe type filler that holds approximately 1.2 milliliters of ink. The ink for today is Sailor Zodiac Aries. Just over one milliliter of ink in the filling mechanism might not seem like a lot. And if you want a lot more, you can eyedropper this pen if you would prefer. But I have to say that this particular filling me mechanism, this syringe type, is generally my favorite because I change inks frequently and it makes it very easy to clean. As a habit, I don't normally post my pens, but some people prefer to post pens and some pens need to be posted to use comfortably. 
You can post this pen. It posts nice and deep, not a problem. The band lets you protect it to push it on just a little bit. It is a little longer sticking out back of the hand as you hold it. You could use it without posting. It is plenty large enough. I don't have the tiniest hands. I just don't have giant hands. So I find this pretty good. But for some reason on this pen, I think I, think I might want to use it posted. If you enjoy videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, the important part, the writing sample. This is a tipped nib, and when I was ordering it, I actually thought it was untipped. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that it was tipped, which should help it be a bit smoother in writing, but there is a lot of feedback with this pen. A lot. Borderline towards scratchy, but not scratchy, but it's really looking over that edge. It is, again, Decent. It's very decent, especially given that price point. I'm very happy I have it, and it stays in my rotation for that reason. But its writing experience, I probably would be well served to go ahead and do just a little bit of work to this nib to smooth it out. But the other side is that I kind of value the different writing experiences with doing some of these reviews, which has made me not kind of fix the nib because sometimes when you get inks that are much thicker you can really feel how it can make a nib feel smooth so my biggest thing about this in its writing is it's borderline scratchy and that is just one of those things that you really notice while you're writing with it is how much and I like feedback but this has a lot more than I'm used to getting Now for something a bit more standard in comparing writing size. I use Namiki Blue to do this. Here's how it compares to a Yovo Extra Fine on the left, a medium in the middle, and a 1.1 stub on the right. This pen would get a lot more flex for the buck if I took the time or sent it to someone to make it to a fine nib where it writes more like a medium right now and it flexes pretty nice. But if I brought it down to a fine, then that flex would be sort of enhanced for the regular writing being smaller than the medium that we currently see. So how does it compare in writing size to other nibs I've used? Looking at the writing of a fountain pen Revolution Himalaya with the fountain pen Revolution Flex nib, here it is next to a Noodler's Ahab with their Flex nib, a Noodler's Ahab with the fountain pen Revolution Gold Flex nib, a Pilot Vanishing Point with a medium nib, a Parker Jotter with a medium nib, and a Pelican P200 with a medium nib.
So it isn't a review without some size comparisons. Here it is capped, here it is uncapped, and here it is posted. As far as its size goes, I find it to be right in the middle for me. It's right about the size of that Lamy Safari. And both of them have smaller nibs. And with that, you tend to get a little bit closer to the nib, or at least I do, while writing. Which, in that way, is a little bit of a disadvantage because I feel like it makes me choke up on the pen. A thicker section might help. At this point, we have a dirty pen that we need to go ahead and clean. Be sure to check out the next pen review when we take a look at the Pelican M1000. If you want to be able to support not just my channel, but any reviewer, then when you make a purchase, be sure to tell that retailer where you heard about it. Thanks for watching.